they don't get any glucose in their diet. Go, 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 go. My arch found it. That was fun. Hello, I'm Margaret. And I'm Russ. And we're with Michaela. Join our adventure to save Africa's wildlife. Okay, we're off to see the monkeys. We're going to the Globus Monkey Conservation here in Diani. And, uh, Kenya. Kenya. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing some of the Globus. They are it's brilliant, brilliant. It's brilliant monkeys. Um, and then we have. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. Hope you don't mind the camera. <laughs> it makes you smile. That's nice. Hello, hello. Today I uh, hope is to learn a lot about what you're doing here because, and it's your 20th anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> um, oversee the projects and we all work as a team though, so we're all quite good. I originally came as a volunteer five years ago. So I, I will give you a full tour so you'll get to see some of the work we do. Good. Yes. Um, and Betsy, who you'll meet, is one of the colobus and she was the first hand-reared colobus in the world of her species. No one's ever had to do it, not even in a zoo setting. So they needed a carer and I came for six months as a secondary carer, fell in love with the place and then I did my research for masters and then a position came up and I got it. Oh, nice. I'm very <laughs> They are one of the prettiest monkeys. Yeah. They are beautiful. People, people keep saying the ones in Nairobi are better, but I don't believe them. <laughs> Conflict. Um, so that doesn't necessarily affect the colobus because most people don't see the colobus as a pest. But I mean, that's our flagship species. We live all primates in the area. Um, so in fact, we have vervet sykes, uh, we have bush babies, and we actually have a baboon with us at the moment. Um, but with the colobus, the biggest problem is, is deforestation actually, is, is habitat loss. And this place is rapidly developing. So what you're mm. finding now is a lot of these small fragmented forested patches are just, just decreasing because of development. So a lot of our education is focusing on you know, why the forest is important for people as well and oh, yeah. for the animals. Um, and so the such things as, the, did you see the canopy, the bridges across the road? <laughs> Oh. That's our work, and that's the colour bridges we call them. What did you do so importantly? Has the education been successful? I think it guides you. you yes. Uh... Yeah, it has been successful. Because uh, uh, we used to have like so many people around keeping monkeys as pets, oh, keeping but pets. at the moment we have less cases from around. Very good. Yeah, so it's a good sign. That is a good sign. It's not a good idea. Don't catch the monkeys to try and sell them to tourists. Hello. Oh, the reason a colobus started was 20 years ago. There was a lot of residents who were getting quite upset because they would always see dead colobus along the road. Um, so originally it was to reduce such things as the road traffic accidents that we see. Okay. Um, but as the organisation's grown, is that we do we have a 24 hour seven hotline and we do welfares but we actually do have a big conservation element that's our education that's our pest assessment so we will go to hotels and we'll try and help reduce um, pest problems if they have them I don't like to call them pests but that's what they are seen as um, we do a lot of community outreach working with farmers um, with local kiosks and we also um, help with forestation so we work with local road trails roadside tree sellers to so try and encourage the sale of indigenous trees because mm -hmm. what you tend to find here is people will buy a plot and they make it into almost like an English lawn so it's all exotic plants and it looks very pretty but actually it's not very beneficial for the wildlife so we are trying to encourage the planting of indigenous trees the sale um, and generally you know the why people should keep a small fragment of forest we, we have we have to do quite a lot really, it's a quite an impressive organisation so I'm, it's, for 20 years they've done this so I can't take credit. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but we have a lot of issues with electrocution, so a lot of the monkeys get electrocuted on the exposed cables. Um, and recently, we have been working very closely with Kenyan Power, and they are insulating all the cables in Diani for us, and a lot of work from them too doing that as well. So, um, so we are ultimately our main target is to reduce human wildlife conflicts um, and also forestation. With your project, you have a lot of, I'm sure, injured monkeys and and orphan monkeys that come in and uh, ex pets that used to be. Do you end up forming troops to release? Yes, you do. So we have, at the moment, we actually have two troops ready to be released. And, um, and are they, which vervets, or are they? Vervets and um, a small group of colobus. Oh, cool. It's going to be the first release that we're aware of of this species. Of so colobus? Yes. How many do you have? We only have um, four individuals we'll be releasing. Um, they have been with us, some have only been for a year, others have been about four. So we will not release them until we have a healthy troop. So on average we get about five orphans a year. Five, six. We had quite a lot recently actually. No, just generally. Probably more actually, but yeah, six to eight. And we with our policy is we release all our animals. So they could be in our care for an hour, they could be in our care for a week, it could be a month, it could be years. But the end goal is to get them all released. When they come in as very young, and we do have some babies which we can show you, um, they will be of us probably two to four years. Um, and so we form troops of males and females of different ages, um, and, we, and we give them pre-release training, and we pre release them, and we monitor them for at least three months, normally a year after they've been released. And, and then you, that's part of the data that you collect, then, is how they've been doing it. Okay. Is the Columbus monkey harder to rehabilitate than the vervet? So, as a, as a species they're very sensitive. They actually have three stomachs, which makes their diet very uh, difficult to manage. Now, we our success rate for colobus orphans has increased, but it's not 100%. So we still lose lots. Um, and we had to change it to it was a manager before me, which she found basically they were much better on a goat's milk. So a combination of goat milk and water, with probiotics, and then when they're very, very young, because there's bacteria is missing in their stomach, they would put a little bit of colobus poop, so feces from a female colobus, mix it into the poop shake, and it gave them back some of the bacteria. So that seemed to work very well. <laughs> it was an odd job for everyone to go out again. Not, not, not something I would like to try. <laughs> think outside the box. Yes, I mean it was very, it was very innovative from the, the the past manager, and so it seems to work. But this still, we still have issues with their being sensitive. I mean, cases that we've had in, they've caught them in pneumonia, liver problems. We haven't, we haven't found the, what, exactly what we need to do. We're still learning. Um, they also are incredibly sensitive when you just bring them in as adults. You can't keep them that long because they, will, they almost go into depression, whereas they won't eat. They don't like being in cages. Um, and they, they prefer to be out with their own. Sure. Um, guys, you, you've got to have some input on this. I mean, you've worked with yeah. for years. What else would you say? We try and not go to the milk because that seems to be where issues arise. So if we can skip the milk, right. we will. Um, and we have, as you'll, as you'll see, six colobus now. And they, Betsy was the youngest that came in who, who was successful. She came in about 10 days old, oh, uh, where the others were a few months old when they came in. And the ones that have come in very young, we haven't had any success with those. Because for the first six to eight weeks, they're white. Hmm. And if we can find our troop, have you seen our troop today? today. The wild troop. We have a, what, we have a baby in there. Are they white? That's yeah, amazing. The white to come. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> they are just such a... Are you... Is there anyone else in the world who works with these monkeys the way you do to protect them and to save them like this, rescue we have? Anybody else? The colobus? No, I wouldn't say to the so same you, extent. Okay, so you're basically it. 
for this, especially for this species, yeah. I'm t and that's what I'm talking about, yeah, that yeah, species, yeah. 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 Because, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people that do other things and with other monkeys, but with this... Because I had never, until Keith contacted me a couple of years ago, I'd never even heard of them before. Oh, really? And then saw some of the video and pictures, and then I thought, my goodness, yeah. what an amazing looking yeah, monkey. Oh, just beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so I've never heard of them before. Yeah, but there's a lot of things I haven't heard of, you know. <laughs> I might have gray hair and lived a long time, but I, the older I get, the more I realize I don't know. <laughs> nursery at the moment so when they first come in we have um they come in very young and they're in human care very much like you described so they will be in 24-hour care with a human um, and then eventually when they get older um, and a bit more independent we then put them in small groups for the for our nursery we do have sites and furbits together because in the wild they do live together okay uh, but they will get separated as they get older into our research hub center um these guys, we've got one site down here, Phil Pendo, came in on Valentine's in fact he's one year old with us, because he came in Valentine's Day. So he's a year old. Isn't wow, he? he's still tiny, isn't he? Yes, and he's, um, that one that he's, if we remember rightly, he came in, Pendo means love in Swahili, oh. this is why we called him, this one here, um, and they get her as a pet. And now she adopts the little ones. <laughs> oh, this little one right here. Yeah. And then we have... The team was just found by herself, actually. We don't know why. The team, your face is going brown. <laughs> so I'll show you our little white cat, the um, Oh, we've got a wild one as well. Fantastic. Are the wild ones here? They like to groom each other. <laughs> oh look, oh yeah, right through the fence. So at the moment, because what ended up happening, we had Betsy by herself for many years. There's another reason she was very humanised. Um, oh, that's, 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 that's a colourful smell as well, they're quite smelly monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> you smell them before you see them often. Um, and so this enclosure was never built for as many colobuses as in there. We just had almost like a boom of colobuses that came in and survived, which is great. And this is Betsy here. She was dropped because the male was attacking the females. So it's like in the lions, yes. they do the same thing? Yes. Do all the monkeys do that or is that something that's the colobus monkey? You tend to find it depends on how the social group setting is. So if it's one male and several females, then yes. But with baboons and furbits, because there's several males, several females... It doesn't... They're already... Adja okay, because they're already adapted to the fact that there's multiple males. The, yeah. I always, I've always liked this story, and I've seen it... I actually witnessed it happen. I read it in a book. Adult male baboons, when they're fighting each other... <coughs> Excuse me. ...will tend to sometimes grab a baby and put it in between. And the reason they, one of the reasons they believe they do that is because neither of those males know who that baby is. Oh! It's okay. paternity and certainty. So they go, oh, we're not going to attack the baby because it could be one of us. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. They don't, they don't do a quick DNA test. No. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> he came in a couple of days ago and his mother was poisoned. Oh. And I always say with poison cases, I kind of wish people could see what happens. People often don't know how painful it is. And she took, we tried to save her, but about three days she passed away. And now we've got a baby orphan. He doesn't like me because I'm the one I took him away from his mother. You're enjoying that. <laughs> Something new, huh? A new jungle gym.